guys it's Oris from Ukraine and today I would like to take you to a few villages in northern Ukraine in Chernihiv province all the way up in the north of our country actually not far from Belarus and Ukraine many of those villages were under occupation in the early stages of our war and uh, yeah let's just take a look what uh, happened here we'll examine some events and see on a local um, current uh, situation uh, how these villages are being restored if they're being restored and in general what's happening around together with me we've got Johnny Johnny hello, hello. Good to see you. my readers already know him follow link below and there is Mana a journalist from Japan hello hello some nice ladies from uh, this uh, village and there is Dmitro Dmitro how are you doing? Quite fine. Cool. For your account, Dmitro is the founder of organization called Repair Together, and they actually help to restore damaged places in, in, in those areas that we'll be examining today. So stay with us and let's carry on. So where are we are? Can you tell us about this place? We are in Yagidne. The village was under occupation during 26 days. And people were captured in the basement of the school and kindergarten for 26 days. Uh, we will go down to the basement. The basement is quite is small. I think it's up to 150 square meters max, and up to 300 people were captured there. And unfortunately, some of them died, up to 20, uh, due to ventilation conditions. And Actually, the deaths were quite horrible because when it lacks uh, air, then just brains first goes uh, insane and people start doing very weird uh, things and then die. On the first floor, there was a, stra uh, a station of Russian soldiers. Mm -hmm. And in basement, they kept all the population of this village. Basically as prisoners? Actually, yes. They wow. were allowed to walk on the street one time a day. Oh my God, it's crazy. Um, yeah. That's the sad story. And uh, let's hope uh, today, uh, in addition to the sad stuff, we'll see some inspirational as well. And actually, one of my missions is to show the bright future of our country. So we have to look always on the both sides of, of, uh, of this scenario. While we are waiting for, for us to open the, uh, the, the basement, Johnny is seeking for a place to reunite with nature, we call it, Johnny. I want to uh, pee on some Russian bodies here. Okay, and actually, yeah, like here you can see some trenches over here. This was the place where the Russian armed vehicles were stationed and, you know, in order to protect and uh, hold uh, this place. Uh, so we are waiting to go inside uh, the basement over there and actually, yeah, the situation looks like this. So you see some things uh, where children used to play but now obviously no children sound over here and another another uh, trench where the uh, armed vehicle was stationed wow actually walking in the bush or in the forest like this a little bit further inside uh, the trees is not entirely safe uh, many areas still can be mined over here and even on the road from Kyiv to this area to Cherny, while we are driving, it is not recommended to stop on the side of the roads because there is a risk that there can be mines still and especially in the eastern Ukraine people daily die because of such stupid mistakes. So currently those people that you see here they are waiting for the um, head of the village. Uh, everybody has their own par personal questions to, to settle down you know like maybe uh, some social things, how the payments are being done, maybe like about some minor things about reconstruction of their house and so on. So it's like a regular admin uh, stuff to deal with. And what I'm curious about that they have a meeting in, in this um, uh, kindergarten, the former kindergarten, uh, which is associated with the worst tragedy in the recent history of this village, unfortunately. So I'm walking here around and it's already almost a year since these tragic events happened here. I'm just wondering like 
how like when is going to be rebuilt and like will, will it be rebuilt in general so Dmitro what can you tell about this basically there were two institutions here the kindergarten and the school but since demographic situation in this community went down uh, even before the war they decided to close the school here mm -hmm. and now after also smaller children moved from these villages there are not that many uh, people here and that's why right now this building is not in priority for restoration and since our government and our uh, um, our country as an institution suffers and fights right now against Russia so that's the top priority mm -hmm. uh, local communities decide by themselves what should be restored in the first line and right now as far as I know they just figured out what school uh, should be active in the first line uh, what uh, what hospitals should work and uh, and these buildings are rebuilt right now mm -hmm. and as, as as far as I know for for this school and kindergarten there is no specific plan when okay. it's going to be rebuilt. And now when people have to talk about the reconstruction on a much bigger scale, you know, uh, some people from the ministries in Ukraine even tell that it's not really rational to rebuild some places because you need to have a local economy to, you know, to provide services to people. And if there are no people, then who will be using this? So the, the question is much more complicated, which goes beyond simple physical reconstruction. You need to restore the entire ecosystem uh, where the society can flourish. And the question is how to achieve uh, this progress. He is coming. So now we actually enter this basement. It's pretty dark, please. Okay, I'm eliminating. And, oh, well. So people were sitting over here. They sit here and they were not allowed to go more up. And people were sitting on the benches over here. As you see. Oh, yeah, it's cold here inside, yeah? Uh, and they kept track of records of people. So like the corridor, 59 people were staying here and we see like seven children were inside. Mm. Oh, wow. One of the cells, one of the rooms, they stayed here. Uh -huh. So in this cell, for example, it's also written there were 22 people mm -hmm. and uh, five uh, children over here, yeah? Even for a few minutes, it's already miserable. It's like so damp. And they stayed like this. It's disgusting, you know? Yeah, here you see it's a confirmation. 136 people and 39 of them are children. This used to be a gym inside. And this is the biggest room uh, in the entire basement where most people actually stayed. It's terrible even to think what people experienced while staying over here. And you see this the box of uh, Russian soldiers' food ratio. Mm -hmm. On these benches, uh, you know, when people died, they, they were laid down o over here. And basically they were corpse mm -hmm. together staying with other people and children around. And the worst is that before the person, uh, you know, is about to die, mm -hmm. they're getting crazy. You know, they, they go out of their mind and everybody was witnessing uh, all of this. So uh, there were like times then, like, for example, somebody died in the evening. Mm -hmm. uh, through the entire night, you had to, you know, stay together with uh, that person. And it was very, very unpleasant for everybody inside, of course. This man personally with his family stayed here on this very location mm -hmm. and yeah, he remembers this period. Wow. So he was here? Yes, personally with his grandchildren, like this. This was painted by children and also here you can see it's a table and a calendar. So they were keeping track uh, of people uh, passing away. Uh, yeah, you see like Berezin means March 
uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and like how many people stayed, how many people died over here. So they kept track of the dates and on the 31st of March this village became liberated. One of the most usual questions when journalists ask victims of war about the feelings, like how do you feel when this or that happens? So now my question to you, how do you feel being there? You, you, you usually it's, ask people how do they feel, how do you feel? It's so, um, it's very sad and uh, you know, it's really hard for me to ask, you know, after mm -hmm. all these Oh, the you know how they feel and yeah, especially after one year and yeah, it's, it's not really, easy. It's not easy, and, but I have to you know tell the job. Japanese people. So yeah, thank you. So now we arrived to a. Uh, like the local cultural center, which is completely destroyed, as you can see. And what is surreal is to see this brand new playground and the kid is actually playing over here in the middle of all of this mess. Oh, wow. That's very, very surreal. And that was destroyed completely. And as you can see, and in this uh, building, all the pe people from this community had concerts children could play musical instruments uh, there was also a theater uh, circle over here and now you can see in what state it is mm -hmm. and i think after uh, cleaning up of private house we decided and that was like a bit complicated moment for us because we decided to do a cleanup in this building together with djs mm -hmm. and that was then I think in June mm -hmm. and that wasn't so easy for our society to accept any kind of anything that would be connected with parties and that was a little bit scary for us but we decided that for for us for for people who actually help it is also very important to have something like a normal life where they could not be only helpful and mm -hmm. not only to help uh, to to the people that suffered, but also have some place where they can speak with other young people mm -hmm. um, Maybe have some fun maybe have some evening mm -hmm. uh, With with the fire so yeah. but actually I don't know if it was your intention or not But it was great marketing to get uh, other people young especially young people to see uh, It's possible to volunteer and rebuild because it was because of this exact spot. I recognize it this uh, repair rave that I thought, oh, wow, this is really cool. And I followed you on Instagram and I realized, oh, you have another, uh, every weekend you guys are going to different villages to mm -hmm. repair and I can volunteer. So I went, I made a video about it. A lot uh -huh. of people uh -huh. saw it and donated money, but also a lot of people maybe uh, came and volunteered as well. So mm -hmm. it was a very smart, um, I don't want to call it publicity or marketing because maybe that wasn't the original intention, mm -hmm. but uh, it was a great way to show how strong Ukrainians are especially young ones that even uh, <laughs> during these crazy times mm -hmm. they can get together they can be light-hearted enjoy music enjoy uh, the company of each other but while actually doing something good the people here do not really have a lot of different activities to have mm -hmm. so the cultural center is basically an essential part of their lives it's a, it's it's a core it's a place where they all the time mm -hmm. spend their not working time mm -hmm. And it is also a kind of symbol for for people, a symbol of, of life, mm -hmm. I, I, if, 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 you, if you will. And that's very important mm -hmm. for them. So it has to be rebuilt somehow, because now it's very... Uh, it is... Waiting for its better times. Uh, there are several uh, houses of cultures here, and right now we are working together with local community to figure out what exactly makes the most of sense yeah. to rebuild. Mm -hmm. uh, considering also logistics, so it makes more sense to rebuild one cultural center for the whole community, at least, but at the same time figure out how to yeah. solve problems with, with living spaces. Ukrainians do not have much money right now, and uh, we think 
that if if Ukrainians have money, then that's very important thing. But usually they led to the army. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, in our point of view, first of all, people should donate to army, then to wounded people that suffer and that uh, where where there is a question of of life and death. That's already life, and we consider this like only the thir the third or the fourth Tier. rank Tier, yeah. in 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 priority. So we we collect donations from this Western countries. We have quite a lot of subscribers in Instagram that created some audience for us, and we collaborate also with local businesses who want to show their social res responsibility, and we do partnerships with them. We work also with some humanitarian uh, organizations from Switzerland, Poland, and United States uh, that help us uh, for some projects. Um, yeah, that's basically the three yeah. main mm. sources. Okay. And if you would like to contribute to Repair Together activity, guys, please consider doing so. I'm going to provide links next to this video so you can learn more about their great work. Looking in all of this, I'm just wondering, like, is it like really does it make sense to to keep the walls because it's completely destroyed and there should be some projects to, you know, to make it uh, rational, yeah, to make all of this happen. And definitely that's a big question how to bring life back uh, to those communities and to these places. Let's continue to another village, guys. Okay, so something is being rebuilt as I see here. The new windows at least. Yeah, but this building was rebuilt by another organization which is much more powerful than we are. Uh -huh. uh, actually affiliated with some state things. Uh, it calls Dobrobat. Uh -huh. uh, they they helped here with roofs in this two, two floor houses. Uh, that's already Ivanivka. We just stopped in another village uh, here nearby and you can see another big, rather large uh, building which used to serve as a local community center being destroyed. The irony of this is that the entire building was you know, constructed during the Soviet times in the 30s in a typical for that time Stalin architecture type. So it was destroyed by Germans during World War II. The Soviets rebuilt it and now the Russians destroyed it again and Ukrainians had to rebuild, you know, so the, the history goes here over and over again and people sometimes are just getting tired to follow that but we understand this is something we have to go through uh, this makes us stronger and uh, I hope that today we're gonna see some inspirational examples of, of reconstruction of this area Building of community uh, yes. is if you do some labor together with people, you feel better. Mm -hmm. And you have this force to fight. Yes. And you have this force to do uh, nice things. Yes. So sometimes the subject of your works means not that much. Mm -hmm. It's just very important to do at least something useful together. Yes, and I noticed that in your events, at least the one I volunteered at, uh, you would invite the local community to participate uh, uh -huh. also, uh, which is exactly, really nice. Yeah. Exactly. And, and they, they see that like volunteers are coming, but the local people are coming too, it's really nice. And sometimes they are that much frustrated and that much de depressed that by themselves it is not very easy for them to start doing something. Yeah. But once people come here, once they do it together with yeah. them, then it might be also a launch button for them to do something. And yes. you have the project to rebuild this one, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. good luck. Uh, Looking forward to come here next summer and uh, enjoy the concert. Yeah, we are, yeah. We, are, we, are, we are going to do that. Amazing. Yeah, this place has to be revitalized and this will have a new life. Very big sign for us. Yeah, because this war is also about the culture, right? Like Russians, they want to exterminate Ukrainians as a nation and uh, it's vital uh, together with the military strength to, to support to develop the culture, which makes it unique and which puts a sense into this war in general. We just take 
for one object up to uh, 10 people. Two of them have building experience, another one not, like, like myself. And they learn oh. and they build in this way the houses. Uh, right now we built seven, seven, uh, seven houses all on the stage of walls uh, and roofs. We built it in a way of also building camps. We provided 17 building camps. Everyone worked. They worked uh, from August till December. Mm -hmm. Every weekend from Thursday till Sunday, people came here from 30 till 50 people, uh, split it into groups and built houses. Mm -hmm. So here, guys, you can see one of the examples of uh, reconstruction. And uh, like, who lives here? How do you choose uh, which place to reconstruct, which not? In general, there, uh, there were 226 houses destroyed in these 15 villages. Some of them, like 40%, were used as summer houses. So there, there were no sense to... to re there, there was sense to rebuild it, but that was not the first need. So, I think 130 houses were houses of families who basically lived here. Many of them moved to other cities in Ukraine or to other countries. Uh, so, out of 130 houses, let's say only 60 families stayed here. Then some of them, and our capability was only to build up to 17, 18 houses, so then we needed to do interviews to figure mm -hmm. out who was in the most need, because sometimes people had possibilities to rebuild by themselves, so we... Mm -hmm. uh, so what about this family, who lives over here, for example? Um, older couple, uh -huh. late 50s, 60s, uh, the men had cancer, and they didn't have a possibility. Uh, they, they didn't have a possibility to rebuild themselves. So, so what would be the approximate uh, budget of this kind of project? From, from thirty to forty thousand dollars. Okay, for for this kind of house, guys. That's mm -hmm. you can see the. Uh, yeah, the budget of it. So driving between those villages around Chernihiv, we seen. Uh, a rather picturesque historical church in such a poor condition as you can see guys and uh, over here there are some leftovers of uh, Russian shells that were brought here by local uh, villagers it's pretty messy but let's come closer and see the church is definitely old I see there is uh, the plate which tells that this is the memory of architecture in Ukraine. Yeah, there are so many things uh, like from our heritage that also suffered during the war. If you move closer inside, Dmitro just told that uh, Russians were using this as a storage for their like shells and uh, other armor stuff. And uh, you, when Ukrainians were fighting with them, things detonated and basically destroyed this church. Wow. Actually, this story reminds me of a classical style of Russians because during the Soviet occupation of Ukraine, many uh, sacred places like this were used for as warehouses, as storage, as you know, like some other facilities, but not uh, in the religious purposes. So basically, there is nothing holy to them, and uh, what they do is simply, you know, cynically using the walls for their own needs. Everybody knows Dima in those villages because he is the leader of organization which is doing their best to, to restore you know, important things for the community and uh, you would usually need to rely on such uh, leaders who are uh, respected and who, who make things done.
we feel very lucky to be accompanied by him and don't remember to subscribe on their Instagram Rebuild Together. Let's continue. At this very place there was a house. And now you see that there is a construction happening. The idea of this project, as Dmitro explained to me, is to be built only by women. Some terrible things happened over here. Take a look at this car. So uh, yeah, maybe probably there was a, some a big explosion. And yeah, now they're rebuilding the house. But also if you take a look just how people used to live here, for example, before this this war. Yeah, so some wooden houses and this kind of back garden made like this for them. So uh, needless to say, hopefully this will be even some improvement in the construction materials. Let's hope for that. This is a lady, Nina. Hello, hello. And uh, the Hassan, and this used to be their former house. Another good example is that Nina told, you know, I'm currently doing like three jobs, and uh, I want to be successful financially as soon as possible uh, to be able to repay the house where I am living now, because uh, she was settled by neighbors on the condition that in the future she'll buy another house somewhere in the in this village. And she told, I don't want to wait for eight. I, I need to be self-sufficient as much as possible. And that's a good example for many people, actually. Uh, in Ukraine because what I found is that people get accustomed to humanitarian aid which basically you know like doesn't help them to to improve their like uh, entrepreneurial skills but you know you have to carry on somehow with this here guys we see another example of the house which is currently under rebuilding process and looks like we are even invited to go inside let's see how it is there so here inside is already something done yeah oh it's being done the boiler and everything yeah you think it will be better than before yeah 100 percent like she probably didn't have a Hundred like forty liter boiler for two hundred. Oh my God, it's huge! The family uh -huh. of eight people had two houses on the street, and both were destroyed. Oh no! Mm. So right now we are building one, uh -huh. but a little bit bigger than it used to be. So they can live together. Okay. If we finish by summer, that will be good. Uh, okay. This one by summer, until yeah, the next winter. Because because to make internal uh, um, refurbishment you need temperature like at least 15 grad grads so it gets dry mm -hmm. oh. so the best time we can f start doing this is end of March start of um, April okay. and then we would need couple of months okay. yeah but everything looks ready yeah. and you just need to make it up and running right and and some organizations just donate us materials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we have one organization from Poland, they sent to us uh, insulation. Yes. Uh -huh. We can work with this insulation only in, in the spring. And there is another organization from Czech Republic, it, it calls Corridor. They sent to us boilers, heaters, radiators, and, and okay. this stuff. Oh, nice. That's really so cool. what is needed to finish this construction this, I think by for, summer? for this seven houses we are building here, so we built nine, uh, uh, 16, seven okay. houses we built uh, in this way that we collect from different sources money. Uh, for these houses I think we still need something like 50,000 for seven houses okay. to finish. Uh, yeah, it's just just the okay. just value oh, okay. that is needed. If we find materials, that's oh. fine. If we just if someone donates, we can buy materials. And nine in other houses, we are going to build. That just one organization sponsors the whole building from Germany that calls help you. So does it mean because like I am as a blogger and. Pretty often people write to me and they ask like, Orest, I want to come to Ukraine, uh, how can I apply my hands, what can I do? Like, does it mean that they can write to you 
and uh, join your reconstruction projects as a volunteers. Yes, we are going to create uh, international building camps. Right now we are working on our organization actually to be able to uh, uh, to to process all requests. Right now it is a little bit com complicated for us because there are only six people of us and we just don't have enough hands and it is also not always we can hire someone because of of, of, of money. We, uh, we, we also need some money for our uh, operational things but at the same time nevertheless we are going to do in the spring and in the summer international building camps and by the way sometimes international people already come here and uh, they worked here as volunteers. For instance, the roof of this house was built by a guy from Michigan, which uh, his name is Jess. Okay. He is a framer with 20 years of experience. And another guy, Dominic, from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Slovakia. So if you guys want to join as a volunteer such a nice cause, please write to Repair Metro, together. Repair Together. Instagram. Yeah. Still many many houses are still damaged over this here. One. Yeah. This one. This is her house? Yeah. yeah. We have a new visit. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Let's go. Let's see. Typical, typical yard of a Ukrainian village farmer. Hello. Dobry day, dobry day. Hello, hello. Nadia is helping the local volunteers, so she basically seen how the guys are building houses in this village and she's always inviting them for lunch. And uh, now we are invited for the lunch as well. Uh, so let's try to check it out. Uh -huh. Amazing. And we have uh, already lunch ready for us. Mm. Are you excited? Yes, I'm very excited. Nice. nice. <laughs> it's a part of Ukrainian tradition. Well guys, uh, in this very moment I think we can stop recording this video, it's very inspirational <coughs> story and uh, despite all the difficulties that Ukrainians are used to suffering in the la last time, you see that the process of the building is ongoing. People uh, keep uh, optimism and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, everything will be uh, possibly the best in the nearest future. In the meantime, thank you for watching and looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Good luck!